Hey guys, it's been a while since I haven't posted any video. Sorry for this gap. This is a CAN bus, and all devices talk to each other one by one. There is only one bus, so two nodes cannot transmit the data at the same time. If two devices send data together on the bus, the data packet sent by these devices would get corrupted. So to avoid that, we use arbitration. So when two nodes send the message together, these messages get transmitted one after another according to their priority. Let's see how it works. Whenever we look at data, a logic high is 1 and logic low is 0. But that's not the case with a CAN bus. If you see the CAN bus, this is 0 and it is a dominant bit. And 1 is a recessive bit. This point is very important to understand the CAN arbitration. Accessing the CAN bus is an event driven activity and it takes place randomly. If two nodes try to occupy the bus simultaneously, which means if two nodes want to send the data at the same time, in that case, it is implemented with a non-destructive, transparent and bitwise arbitration. This non-destructive and transparent arbitration is possible because the transmission of a dominant bit always overrides the recessive bus state. Non-destructive and transparent means that the message are not corrupted and transmission of the highest priority message happens without any interruption because of arbitration. The message priority allocation occurs in real time when the CAN bus is active and it is possible because of the message identifier bits, which occur during the starting of the CAN message frame which we saw in our previous video. And assigning the priority of the message is quite simple. The lower the message identifier number is, the higher will be its priority. For example, an identifier which has all zeros has the highest priority message on the network because of its series of dominant bits. Therefore, if two nodes begin to transmit simultaneously, Let's say if node X sends the last identifier as 0 and while node Y sends as 1, then node X takes the control of the CAN bus and completes its message. A dominant bit always overrides a recessive bit on a CAN bus. It is like getting entry into a nightclub. I particularly hate these rules. If you are a male character and if you bring bunch of male friends with you, then you are not allowed in the club or you are supposed to get in line. But on the other hand, if there is a couple, they get to enter inside first. And on top of that, if there are a bunch of young attractive girls, then those will be given a higher priority. Well, gender is working like a message identifier here. If you are a boy, you are a recessive bit. And if you are a girl, then you are a dominant bit. I guess that's the case when you are in a relationship. The more girls are there, the higher will be the priority of getting entry into a nightclub. Now coming back to the CAN bus. The CAN controller of each node monitors the bus as it transmits and consequently can detect if another node is winning the arbitration. If the bus is active or node is transmitting or just has finished the transmission of the data, no other node will attempt the transmission until the first node completes its task. The transmitting node constantly monitors each bit of its own transmission. The CAN arbitration process is automatically handled by a CAN controller of each node because each node continuously monitors its own transmissions. Let's say there are two nodes, node A and node B. Both of them transmit the data at the same time. Now if you see on the screen, node A sends a recessive bit and node B sends a higher priority dominant bit. So the bus gets overwritten by node B's higher priority dominant bit. Node A detects that the bus state does not match the bit that it transmitted. So the node A stops the transmission 
while node B continues on with its message. After some time, node A performs another attempt to transmit the data once the bus is released by node C. This functionality is the part of ISO 11898 physical signaling layer, which means that it is contained entirely within the CAN controller and is completely transparent to a CAN user. The allocation of message priority is up to a system engineer, but the device manufacturers mutually agree on the significance of certain messages. For example, a manufacturer of motor drives may specify that message 0010 is winding current feedback signal from a motor and 0011 is the tachometer speed. Because 0010 has the lowest binary identifier, messages relating to current values always have higher priority on the bus than those concerned with the tachometer readings. Message frames always transmit the most significant bit first, and as the message ID are at the beginning of the frame, they form part of the arbitration sequence. Messages with lower ID have higher priority. Additionally, remote frames which we have seen in our previous videos have a lower priority than the data frame if both the frames have the same message ID. Well, that's how a message is sent or received smoothly over a CAN bus. I have added all the references related to these sockets in the description. If you have any query, you can ask me in the comment section or email me. Hit the like button and subscribe to my channel. And finally, thank you so much for watching this video.